in uh, General Santos and he just decided to come back because uh, he's missing the family, especially his daughter. Rod, you just wait, I mean, for the rest of those who, not, uh, or who cannot recognize you anymore. And of course, I see there in red, is that Brother Peter? <laughs> yeah, nagamay is Brother Peter, sakto na dong. And also see Jen, see Jen who just have arrived today from Saudi, we're very happy. Thanks, Ape. Thanks to the chocolates. Uh, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'd like, I'd like the couple to uh, stand, please. And let's give them, I mean, we already uh, acknowledged what is this, she brought a while ago. But anyways, let's give them, uh, you know, a, a welcome round of applause. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. We're happy to have them this morning. Of course, here at my left, uh, who else? Uh, okay. And of course, see uh, Andy, and uh, Silans brought along a friend, uh, a best friend, a classmate now from uh, elementary, and uh, I had the time to exchange, you know, pleasantries with her. So really, we like to welcome you as well in Acts. Hopefully, this is no last and only time. Okay? Can we ask you to please rise? Both of us have, you know, eyeglasses. Okay. <laughs> okay. We like to welcome you. Let's give her a hand also. <laughs> Amen, amen. Now, turn to the people in both of your sides, give them a smile, and tell them, I'm happy to see you today in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We already have Brother Nono and Sister Gina after how many months of recovery, uh, the recuperation. As we know, Brother Nono had, uh, had his, uh, I would say, worst ordeal, and the Lord proved that he is faithful, Almighty. Uh, God proved that He answers prayer, and that's why we are back. You know, it's it's kind of like you know a walk to an appeal to come to the church. After all, love is sacrifice. That's why they're coming every Sunday. Since our Thanksgiving, and of course, I'm very happy to see my cousin and uh, see my young the daughter. I cannot wait to see Kuya Jun anytime. Kuya Jun is now doing better, but we're happy to see Ati Anne and see Marianne. Hallelujah. Let's give them a hand also. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Now, I asked the Lord for a message today. As we all know, it has been our tradition. Every first Sunday uh, of a New Year entry, we something like gather together around as a church, as a family, and to seek the face of God and His guidance and to somehow like yearn at least even even just for a little idea of his eternal knowledge because God is omniscient I like it to say omniscient no I didn't hear you say louder omniscient. he knows everything he really exactly knows everything and somehow we do not have that human as we are but something you know of his eternal knowledge we, we kind of like hear even just a single piece of what this year holds for us. Now I'm standing here being your pastor by the grace of God. I ask the Lord, I'm standing here and indeed got you a word today. Are you excited what perhaps is 2015 is holding for us as a church? Holding for you and your family and holding for you and for you personally. Amen? Amen. Are you excited? Okay. I would like us to waste a moment or a time. Let's all stand and ladies and gentlemen, the word of God for us today and I would say for this year is God wants us to bring along His presence anywhere we go. That includes to your restroom. That includes going to your workplaces. That includes to where you go for your studies and for your school. And there are those of us who are here this morning who kind of like little discouraged, lately like feeling you are unworthy because you somehow blew up, you somehow had, you just, you're just talking that to yourself, offended God. But how many of you understand that we never can offend God? In other words, we never can uh, make God turn His face from us. Do we sometimes hurt Him because of our disobedience? But He never will leave us. He never will forsake us. That is why it's not just for a few. It's not just for a number or just a fraction to all of us here today. It includes to every single person here today. Even to those of us 
who feel like we have been disqualified and God does not. Listen, listen to me. Wherever we may go, anytime, whenever, God would like us to bring along His presence. Amen? Amen. Now, I got you. I'd like us to open our Bibles right now, ladies and gentlemen, to Joshua. Chapter 3, beginning verses 5 to 16. I'm really pushing myself to finish <laughs> second time around uh, the Bible. I'm now more than halfway uh, of 2 Samuel. I kind of really starting to love uh, English standard version. So I will be leading us with the red and we'll use brothers and sisters English standard version. But anyway, you have it. The fifth book or sixth book of the Bible, that is Joshua. We're going to read verses beginning 5 through 6, chapter 3 it is. Okay, there we go. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Wow. God bless the reading of His Word. Let's commit ourselves and we are going to ask the Lord Almighty to speak unto us and to minister to all of us. Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I'd like you to notice the word tomorrow. You may see it. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for the Lord, or for tomorrow the Lord, will do wonders among you. How many of you understand? The Lord promises every single, every single one of us a tomorrow. That all of our trials and testings and storms and uh, the wrong things that do happen to us, we somehow like, you know, in those moments and times, shake our heads and Lord, and then uh, fall our tears, the droplets, the bigger droplets of our tears, and raising our hands and, and asking, Lord, why did it happen to me? Did you find the wrong person? Why why those things happen to me? I did sin against you many much, or I, I did sin you much. I my, my sins are not that many, but why did it why did it fall on me? I mean all of those, ladies and gentlemen, listen. They only are just but in preparation of that something which the Lord is calling tomorrow. Say the word tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now next person look and tell that person, tell him, point your finger say, God has got you your tomorrow. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now I'm standing here, ladies and gentlemen, if not all, many of us, the tomorrow that God is talking about is today. I don't know if you heard me. <laughs> I'll say it back. And if you're understanding what I'm saying and you feel like it's the real word of God for you, for your family, and you believe that for our church, just say amen at the end of my statement, okay? If not all by the grace of God, most of us here today coming to the church, your tomorrow is today. Amen. Oh, wow. That is nice. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Amen. <laughs> Jenny is here. You remember it now? It was in January 22, 20, Jen, 20, it was December 22, 23. Being the eldest in the family, she understands uh, what the burden she was carrying her shoulders. It was such an unlikely day as uh, December, December 25, 24 was coming Christmas. You know, Filipinos, there are two uh, holy days in the whole year, the whole year round, where these are very holy to us, family day. Everything uh, is suspended and all are focused on the family. And as a day of celebration and a day of joy, Christmas and New Year. Two, three days before Christmas, or was it real Christmas 24, Jen went to the house and in tears crying, telling me, telling us, Sister Delia, our dad had an attack. And uh, he's not in the hospital. I needed to go. You pray for me, Pastor. 
Because at that moment in the time, she only had Lily there in her pocket. And uh, thinking of the unsurmountable trials way ahead. Being the father, the head of the family, the only uh, breadwinner in the family. I tell you, that's not easy. Jenny must be strong by the grace of God. Colliding all of those trials, like wrong things, wrong things coming to a supposed right time at the right moment. Are you still with me, amen? amen. Now place your right hand to your, to your chest and say, I'm a right person. <laughs> Right you are because of Christ. Right things. I'm not even say right things. Come on. Right things. Happens to me yes. at the right time. At the right time. Let's give God a clap of praise. I was in limbo as well. You come to me as for prayer I can do. As for counseling to as much to my knowledge in the word of God. But way beyond, I just want to be honest to you here at the pulpit. When you come to me on your weakest and on your, low, your lowest, those are uncharted territories that I cannot go beyond. There are those which we can handle, but there are so many also that we cannot. Now all the rest that we can do the most is to trust and believe God. Because we know that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Will you say amen for that? Amen. Make long story short, Jen was forced to apply and to work overseas. She hesitated even because she wasn't used to that. Leaving Zamboanga, oh come on, and going to Manila. And she has another uh, best of friend, there are three of them. And Glyza is coming anytime on March. We're happy to see love, happy love today. I wish three of you can have your reunion. Uh, see, uh, they, are, they are the all Path Girls, and Mojo Jojo. <laughs> uh, see, Ate Katie came actually last November or October, and she just dropped here in the church and gave like how many bars of chocolates and left soon. That's how life is, you know. Uh, say the word chains. Okay. Uh, we cannot hold chains, I tell you. I mean, I hope you like my, my mustache and my beard. I cannot hold chains. You cannot hold chains, and chains is a sign of promotion. Amen? Amen. Make long story short, today is the second year of Jen in Saudi. Second year? God must be very good. Not your tomorrow. Did you let me come away how many months? There are how many of us are looking up and, you know, comparing yourselves around with there are how many in the church, and you have that question mark. When do you, when, when perhaps Lord is my tomorrow, you just hold on there because God has got you in your hand. Amen. God has got you rather in His hand. Amen. Amen. I like us to lift our eyes up and in faith close. Let, let's lift our hands up and let's close our eyes, raise both of our hands and tell God Almighty, tell God, Lord, I, sh I, I believe that my tomorrow is today. Would you say that to Him? Amen. Amen. Say that in faith. Amen. There are two words, genuinely one, I saw myself to the reading of the word <laughs> and asking God, what do you have us for this year? What do you have me for this year? What do you have my family for this year? And God led me in this passage. The Lord told me two things, very easy to remember. God wants us to consecrate ourselves. And to bring along the art of the covenant wherever we go. You're not understanding one of those. That's why I will have to explain them one at a time. By the way, I will concise everything because of our communion. Today's celebration is doubly important. Because more than just today's the first Sunday of the month. Today is the first Sunday of the year. God, God must have something double for us this morning. Amen. Believe that with all of your heart. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now what is meaning to consecration? Because God uh, commanded, by the way I'll be introducing new words to us, which only a few understandings. For example, enjoin. Say the word enjoin. Enjoin. Enjoin is command. Enjoin is uh, a mandate. For example, God is enjoining us. Commanding. 
giving us a mandate. God the Father is enjoining the people here in the book of Joshua to consecrate themselves. He said, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Now what does this mean by the word consecrate? I have you here. Consecrate is simply meaning to set apart. Huh? For example, you have, you, have, you have a harvest. There that field. You harvest like 30 sacks of rice. You, you ground it already in the palai and you have the 30 sacks of rice. And you say, okay, I have here three, uh, three sacks or four sacks. I will set this apart for the family's provision for four months. You know, when you plant a rice, grow it, keep it until uh, the period of the harvest and ground it, it will go through the period of at least uh, four months. Say the word four months. Four months. Uh, four months. Growing it, harvest time, and grounding it, like maybe four months. So, you know, the head of the family say, okay, we only are going to sell 26, uh, 26 sacks. Okay? We will have money, we will have uh, income of these 26 uh, sacks. But the four, we are going to lay this or set this apart for another reason. It's the meaning of consecration, setting apart something. And another, simply meaning offering something for, well, for the Lord. What you have, you are offering them to God, God Almighty in gifted us graciously with three beautiful children, brilliant kids, and kids to God be the glory that you have the fear of the Lord. But we thought of the three, we saying, you know, our daughter wants, uh, wants to help Papa and Mama. She's there now. And uh, Malin wants also to become some, somebody or someone one day. But we said, let us have another from our, uh, let us have another from us, you know, amongst the three to serve the Lord. Let's offer him unto God to serve him one day also to become a minister. That's why we went to Naz. Amongst the three, we went to the best. We talked to the boys since he has his, uh, he has his knowledge. Son, as you are growing, you're not growing to become a doctor. You're not growing to become an engineer. Listen, you are growing one day to become a minister of God. You one day to become a pastor. That's why you ask. Uh, he will reply with confidence and in, in pride and say, When I grow, when I grow big, I will be, I want to be a pastor. I will be a pastor. I'm showing him verses as I'm reading, you know, within, within this time about, you know, Nazirite, because there are Bible, uh, Bible verses uh, speaking about Nazirite. One time I, I called him, son, you read this verse. And you know what? He really reads very well. Pronunciation and uh, spelling everything to him with the glory. He's reading and he went across the word Nazirite. What is meaning son to this? And he said, that's my name. And what's the meaning of that? And the understanding that consecration or as in a matter of the Nazirite is something which one is offering something for in the case to God. Now let me ask you, what's something in your life you're offering to God? That something is a consecration. You're, you're telling yourself, convincing yourself, today is the first Sunday of the first Sunday of the year. I will have a lot of things to do today. Cleaning the house, washing, cooking, what else? Uh, cleaning the already door and everything. But you know, you're talking to your husband, beginning 9 to 12, there will only be 3 hours. You know, we'll not work, we'll not cook, we'll not wash, we'll not clean the already door. We will go to the church. Let us offer our time this 3 to 9 o'clock to the Lord. That is meaning that thing, 3 to 9, or rather 9 to 12 o'clock is something which is a consecrated time you are giving unto God. You understand it? Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's the all is consecration is you are giving oneself to God. It's not just part, but the whole of yourself you are unto God. Yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the word of God for us for 2015, He is calling you and me to consecrate ourselves. To set ourselves apart for Him. To offer ourselves for Him. To give ourselves for Him. The Lord is saying, 
We are to consecrate ourselves for tomorrow. Everybody says tomorrow. 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 When is your tomorrow? Amen. Amen. And I'm here. Say louder. Say it in faith. God is here. God is watching. Want everything to come out from your mouth because everything to come out from my mouth today, He is going to decree them as the things to happen for our year. Amen. Amen. It's very careful. Do not say, do not say you will be rich within this year because God will gonna enrich you for this year. Amen. Do not say I will have a job. Because for some time, two years, three years, you've been looking for a job. And there's no, there no job you can find. Be very careful to say when you will say right now, I will have a job very soon and today and this year. Because God will go to honor the word to come out from your mouth. Amen. Did you have a marriage for some time and you don't have yet a child? You've been praying. You have this courage. Be very careful to come out from your mouth because the moment you will say, this year, I will have a baby. My husband and me will have a baby. Be very careful because God will honor your worries. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a couple of praise. <laughs> consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Listen, why we are to consecrate ourselves? The Lord will do wonders among you. Wow! The reason God is enjoining us to consecrate ourselves for 2015 because God shall perform signs and wonders in our lives. Amen. Greater things, miraculous things, things which He never had performed in the past, perhaps He will perform for this year. Amen. Amen. Better things, newer things, greater things, things whom we have expected or even we have not expected because, because God is able to do above all. God is able to do everything above all that we can ask. We can ask or pray for Him. Amen? Amen. God is still able. Let's give God a of praise. I look to the next person beside you. Tell, uh, tell the next person. Tell, tell the next person. Tell the person. Tell the brother. Tell the sister. God will do wonders for you today. Amen. Amen. There we go. Why consecrate? Because God shall do wonders among you. Amen. You know what? Being, being, being your pastor, God would have to do things first to me in some ways before He could do to you. That the word will be those, those my, uh, the message God would, would have to uh, me speak will not be only lips, but they are experience. Now, wait how many months? I talked to a brother. You see, passion, see the word passion. passion. I preached about last Sunday about passion, amen? We are set our focus on two, ah, uh, strengths. I talked to the brother. Uh, I told him, you and I do have this kind of a gift that is not common. That we can manage how to handle a microphone and uh, can maneuver our voice you have an experience. This brother used to be the manager during the 90s of the IFM. And I tell you his voice, wow. If you're a girl, you would fall in love. But this brother would say, hey, fall in love to the Lord. She has a beautiful wife and has three children or four children. So I told, I told him, bro, I wish one day we can have a program where you and I will do a tandem. We will play music, play music that are contemporary, can appeal to our generation, and not churchy, and not religious. And then in between, not really very long, two minutes, we going somehow share the love of God, share Jesus to others. Because he has connections, he told me, okay, let me see how and what I can do, bro. Well, he addresses me, Pastor, but when we are just in our sets, he calls me bro. Bro. Okay, bro. And my job is also to pray for. Okay, bro. And it took for some time, I would say at least six months. Now, early morning, uh, now, let, let, let me warn you, ladies and gentlemen. When the Lord gets you on, 
He always is seeing to it that you are caught unaware. That everything will be surprised. Hello, amen. 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 There was a man by the name of Gideon. Very discouraged, very low. Because God somehow like forsaken Israel. But there were people who were praying. Asking God, you know, to visit them. To defend them. And God heard the prayer. And God would have to find a man to lead the nation. And he found this one by the name of Gideon. He was grounding, you know, his wheat. You know what's a wheat? Wheat is like uh, also rice. Are you still there, amen? amen? You just imagine, he was hiding, you know, in this little, uh, uh, little, little hut. And suddenly an angel, the angel of the Lord, Jesus in the Old Testament appeared and talked to him. Behold, a mighty man of valor. It's King James Version. What's uh, the English translation of that now? Behold. And not behold, behold is English. Uh, King James Version. Oh, come on. A champion. Oh, come on. Somebody who is undefeatable. Wow. Someone very outstanding. And because very, I, I tell you, when, when you are down, the, how much the message, the word, great they are, when it goes on you because you're very down, you cannot appreciate them. You're wearing another set of glasses when you are down, when you're discouraged. That's why if we encourage somebody who's down and discouraged, do not push, do not become pushy, because it will take some time for the word to penetrate to the heart. That's what we call love. Love is patience. Amen. Are you there? Amen? Amen. Ibong ulo, mas gahi pa sa kining tablong nga, ang sana, sa tika nga bato nga to skilid. Yung ulo mo, sintigas ng bato dyan sa gilid na kahit gaano mo mamasuhin mo, hindi talaga nababasag. Ayaw, wala. Huwag ganun. No, at sina, no? Sino dalit pa sa inyo? Kaya sabi ko, Keres, El Amor. Pasensya. Diba rasa? Uh, amen. Sige daw, tukang mano kita para po ngayon. So, ingon taon si Gideon, ha? Kilaya? Binale, akina, diretsya, skerda, kumigo to takong bersa. Ilangil si, no ay otro ki, ito lang solo. Pakilala ito ang na kumigo, iyo outstanding, iyo champion. Sabi te, el mi pamilya, el pinaka punta na todo to si tribo na Israel. E si tribo, no? I, el clan, kiri di si el rasa. El rasa delimitata, amo tamen, el pinaka punta, kiri di si the list of the list. Kaba ablate komigo? Iwan pasurero ki. Iwan talimpia ki. Iwan ta mantine LCR. Sabi te, LCR aliyo kel, ah, hindi sa CR aliyo ta nga. LCR, kwan? Ben ma, ma, mucho in, ah, uh, in susyo. Iwan si ta lava. Kaba ablate komigo, iwan el, el pinaka. Gal, hindi, hindi si makakre. But little did Gideon, no, actually, God was doing something great on his life on that moment, on his day. Because his tomorrow happened on that day. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. Say the word, wala. Come on, say, wala. Wala. That's how God would do. Surprise you. Wala. Wala ga. Early morning. I still was in bed, but awake already. My phone rang. By the way, do not text or call me. I lost my phone. December 23. I'm still in back. <laughs> so, you get me through my Facebook. And then you wait for some time, like a day or two. <laughs> well, I believe with Anna, no? Before I can read. Anyways, you can get to Sister Dahlia. Sister Dahlia, when you call to Pastor Burley. So, this brother called me. Pastor! Good morning! Uh, the name was not a registered entry. So I will have to ask, who are you? But the voice is familiar. Then I found this the brother. Make no story short, 
He was telling me, we have no slot. And that is how I was introduced to E105.9 News FM. Make long story short, one of my dreams, one of the tomorrow that I have been praying and asking, deep inside my hearts, and they were not nightmares. They were good dreams that every single day, they keep on to be coming to me. Even when I became a pastor, that one day I can become at least job. And God bring them to pass. There was that another. Since I was little, my father had a prayer to God Almighty. We are five or seven in the family. My father prayed and asked my old man that out of my seven children, out of my five children, I can have a son to become a lawyer. Nobody became a lawyer. Well, except me, Siguro, by God's grace. Amen. It's one of the dreams that was in my heart that I am trusting and believing to the Lord that that tomorrow shall happen on my time and on my generation. Amen? Amen. Amen. I was touched last night when Sister Dale told me, you know, a sister in the Lord in the church just out from the blue said she has a good job, a good paying job. She went and told her Auntie Delia, I will, I will, it's one thing which she wanting to redeem. Are you still there? Amen. Because we have some things in our lives where we lost along the way in the past. That God has not forgotten. He wanted you to return that back and pick the pieces to where you fell. Ang tawag nun, redeeming. Redeeming the time because we know the days are evil. Are you still with me? Amen. Now, what the word that captured my heart captivated me because she said, in the family, talking in the family of his father, nobody, there really no one in the family who made it and finished college. She got me there. My wife got me there. I said, we got to pray together with the sister. And then I said, before I went to bed, it was actually last night, that this sister, though it may take a little time, four years, that is, maybe three years, when she finished like two, three years, you know, in a university, but she would have, when she wants to enroll to another university, you know, cross enrolling, you know, uh, different descriptions uh, to subjects, she may, she may go down to the level of like first year back, where she will have to, you know, wait three more years, but it's just okay, it's just okay, amen? Hallelujah. Many of us are too much in a hurry. Don't you know? God will want us to enjoy every step, every single step of the way. Amen? Amen. Because every single step of the way is a miracle. Amen. Now listen to me, church. God is calling us to consecrate for 20, 2015. Amen? I'd like you to place your palm to your chest and say, consecrate. consecrate. Where in your life we see the whole of your life, God is what God is calling. Because God is promising He will do wonders amongst us for this year. Amen. Now, when I went and asked Father God, no, what, what do you mean on this wonder? Because God can do many greater things, miraculous things in our lives individually. But the Lord told me another, another aspect. Because God, when God speaks, there are plenty of angles. You know? John 3.16 is just now meaning only salvation. John 3.16 is the same time meaning sal not just salvation, but meaning healing. John 3.16 is meaning at the same time family blessings. You know, when God speaks a word, they are like, you know, gems, different gems in a, in a, uh, in a diamond. There are plenty of angles, plenty of revelations, plenty of truths. And God is telling wonders which I'm going to do will be communal. Say the word communal. communal. That is why amongst you. Communal is, we can take this as a family. Family mother. We can take this as for the church. There are how many of, there are how many of us parents been praying for something for years? Maybe for our family, maybe for our children. And somehow like, 
the answers of a prayer are way how many how many uh, how many miles? And some of you like you almost submitted to something like maybe it's not the plan or maybe the Lord has another way, another answer for my prayer. No, don't give up. Because, because exactly to what we pray, to what we ask the Lord, it's it's the same God will answer. It's the same God will bring to pass to your family. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Now, I would like to encourage for parents, if there are prayers that are very effective, they are the prayers of the parents for their children. That's why parents, do how much agitated you are, do how much angry or like pushed you out to the corners because your kids are giving you much headaches, never and never say negative against them. Never and never curse them. Because words to come out from our mouths to our children are very holy, are very powerful. By the way, prayers are not just those when we kneel and do like this. It's very Catholic. You know, you can be in your bed and closing your eyes and talking to God, that's prayer. Or you can be in your seat and not even saying in the name of Jesus, but words coming out from your mouth in a form of a wish, it's a prayer. Did you remember the people in the wilderness? When they said, You are bringing us here, Moses, in the wilderness because there are not so many tombs in Egypt. You wanted to kill us. No enough simple case there, you know, uh, to bury us. So you brought us here in the wilderness because the wilderness can the, the wilderness, the desert is our is our uh, symmetry. It wasn't a real form or like the formal way of prayer. But it was. The Lord said, as you were saying, so it will happen to you. For example, when your when you're child's like, you're so much agitated, don't never and never say, you are a real nothing. You, can, you, cannot, you cannot be something. You only are up to that level and one day you will realize that what I'm saying is real. When you will, when you will eat mud, when uh, what you wear are just, you know, uh, are just the rags. And that only rag one day and, and on that day when you will be old, when you will be sickly, when you will die with a cancer, you will remember this thing that I am instilling unto you that mama and papa the word that I am saying we are telling you is true. Now be very careful because that may happen to your child. But even if your child, like you are agitated and uh, you are beyond your patience, you still are applying the word of God and say, in the name of Jesus, I still believe that you boy will, will, will change. I still believe boy that you will have a life transformation. I still believe that God is not yet done in your life. And you know what? My child, one day I know he will serve the Lord. Hello? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. I know a lot of stories that are similar to this one that I'm relating to you. But the thing that I'm saying is this. My brother, my sister, God will do many wonders communally in your family, communally in our church. That's why God is calling us to consecrate ourselves. Amen? Amen. When you see communa, it's not just you, but the bunch to where you belong. Are you there? Amen? Amen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Let's give God a clap of praise. Come on. We go to the next. The Lord told the priests to take up the Ark of the Covenant. You know, it's the Ark of the Covenant. The setting, by the way, of this passage was they were at the opposite side of uh, Jericho. And what, what is this? Uh, what divided them was the mighty, the mighty Jordan River. And at that time, it was the season where the river was over flooding. Because it was the season, the Bible said, of the harvest. We went to uh, Pasunanka River. During rainy season, how boisterous 
are the flow of the rivers. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Now, you times it like 20. The volume of the water, the, the floods of the water. That's how mighty at the time was uh, Jordan River. And the Lord was obliged to bring the two million people across to the promised land. By the way, when God, when we will have problems, let, let God have the headaches to solve them. Because the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Amen? Amen. Our job, ladies and gentlemen, is this. John, or rather, Matthew 6.33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things will just be added unto you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Do not turn things around. Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness the last. And all of these things you will want after them. Uh, don't, don't turn things around. Hello? Amen? Amen. Amen? Problem number one. How can the cross? Are you still there? Amen. Now some, some of the... I'm just thinking on the back side of my head. Back of my head. Because the Jewish people are the smartest, you know, a stop of people in, in the whole wide world. I'm talking about Einstein. I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about you know great scientists in the past and even today. I'm talking about Mark uh, Zuckerberg. Zucker, Zuckerberg. This, these are these are the children of uh, the children of Abraham, the Jewish people. So some some of those engineers together with Josh is saying, okay, uh, they mentioned here, they mentioned there. Okay, we can build boats and cross. Beyond, and I said, okay, maybe we can, we can. Uh, what is this? We can, we can swim. But the Lord said, no, you never will cross by boat or by swimming. The Lord said, call the priest. Now listen, people who are appointed by God as our spiritual priest will play a great role in our year for 2015. Hello, amen? Amen. Priest can be me, your pastor. God said, I want you to call up the priest and carry in their shoulders the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is that box that has the, uh, the mercy seat of God. It's a fall of a cloud where the presence of the Lord stays. Make long story short, actually the Ark of the Covenant here speaks about the presence of God. So the, the priest, you know, four of them, you know, in their ephod, ang tawag nun, yung priestly garment, ephod. They were carefully carrying, at saka naka barefoot yun sila. Don't expect me to be walking barefoot, ha? Kaya ko ang makupil. Pinihebre mi, mi pies, no? Barefooted. Hinahinay tao, tikang mga iksoon, ang mga saserdote. Lakang sila paduma tungtungas, hurdan iksoon. Kay slippery man yun. But you know what? The Lord did many wonders because as they walked, the waters receded. Shhh. A generation away, Moses drew his shepherd's rod. The Lord split the mighty oceans of the Red Sea. And in the middle of the Red Sea, God provided a way. Remember, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. 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 The mighty Jordan River now. You know what happened? The mighty Jordan River retreated. And there was a highway formed in the middle. No slippery anymore. The stones became dry. And there was that smooth highway in the middle. Two million people crossed. And you know what? The priest was there in the middle, there in the ark. Now, question. What dried the riverbed? It was the presence of God that was in the ark of the covenant. The Lord is telling you, for this year, in order for us to be able to see the wonders of God, wherever we go, let us bring along the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah.
Amen? Palakpakan na natin si Lord. This is for me. I'm saying that generally, but the Lord telling me. The Lord, uh, when, when I was the first day, my, my son, I will do wonders in Acts. And you will have a role being the priest. But see to it, wherever you go, anywhere you go, anytime, you bring along my Ark of Co my you bring along the Ark of the Covenant. Because bringing along my presence, you will be effective. Bringing along my presence, you will be fruitful. Bringing my bringing along my presence is not an option, but it's the only answer. And I said a wow to that. I said yes, Lord, I'm here by your grace. Palakpakan natin si God. I would like to close, ladies and gentlemen. God wants us to lead with the presence of the Lord amongst us. I'm, I'm saying how how you live in your work. How, how we lead in your studies, huh? how we lead in our business, how we lead, uh, you know, in our, in our homes, how we lead in our, I mean, anywhere, everywhere we go. Now listen to me, for sure I know, this year, 2015, you will not be alone. You will not be standing alone all by yourselves to face your trials. God shall be with you. We will not be alone. God shall be with us. Amen. <laughs> and listen to me, church. You will not just in trials. You will not be alone in your blessings. In your blessings, the Lord will be around. Amen. Amen. And not just the Lord. In your trials, you will not be alone. Because you are an axe. Acts will be there as well. Amen? Amen. In your trials. Now in your blessings. In your blessings, you will also not be alone. In your blessings, Acts will be there. Amen? Amen. Bago ako mag-lead sa prayer, advertisement na ha? Kasi wala ito sa Acts. Wala ito sa mga anak ng Panginoon. Ito yun. Sabihan mo mo rin yung katabi ko, sabi mo, wala kayo sa Acts by God's grace. Ay, sabihan mo. Pag magluto ka rin ng pagkain or what, so, wala man yan, no? Huwag itago sa kwarto, ha? Tapos, pag nalun na sa kwarto, three days na, ano ba, luto ng Uh, luto ng, ng cake, luto ng... Ah, basta anything special. Pag simot mo gani, eh, parang panis-panis naman ko, ibigay ko na. <laughs> let, let, sabihan na natin ulit, wala yan sa accident. <laughs> Yung pagluto, pagkatapos pagkaluto, ito, I'm going to to lay aside something to brother, something to sister. Di ba? Amen? Or else, pag receive natin sa salary natin, sabi natin, this I will give for the Lord. Amen. This I will give for the ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wow. So, I'll, I'll not be long, I'll not be lengthy. You received the word of God this morning. Amen? Amen. Very nice. Very beautiful. Sige daw. Palapakan natin si God. Sige tayo, ito mayroon. I-claim natin sa Panginoon ngayong umagang